Hi internet, it's me, Doka. Welcome to my channel where I talk about my mental health journey and also whatever I want. Today, I do wanna talk about Simone Biles and um, what this kind of represents to me. The way the Olympics was covered in the news and online and in media really shows a shift in the American zeitgeist, which is actually something that's quite exciting to me. Um, so if you're into this, make sure you subscribe, but I won't ask you to like the video until you actually like it. I'm drinking a Starbucks. I went to Starbucks this morning. Well, my partner went to Starbucks. They messed up the order. I went back. They messed up the order again. So my car is just full of Starbucks. Um, also I'm on the P. I have my Midol. I took my calcium, magnesium, and zinc pills, and I'm just waiting for them to take full effect. I am still cramping. I'm also on my way to buy some dried stock fish because I have been teaching myself how to make pepper soup. Pepper soup. Pepper soup, how we say. And it just doesn't taste the way mama used to make. And I think the key ingredient I'm missing is dry stock fish. So while I'm driving there, let's talk about Simone Biles. Simone Biles is a gymnastics goat, um, Olympic gold medalist, the several world and national championships. She has invented gymnastics moves that um, are considered so dangerous that they try to discourage uh, gymnasts from learning them by uh, giving them lower scores. She has just totally, you know, left her mark on the game and on American culture as well. And she dropped out of certain uh, events uh, due to her mental health and the discourse that's come of this is th this is the question well to a lot of us there's no there's no question to be asked um, and many of her athlete colleagues like Michael Phelps have you know sh expressed their support so people can understand that what Simone Biles chose to do dropping out of the games um, because she's not she's not on her A game. She could cost her team the medal uh, and she could hurt herself because her mental health does severely affect your ability to to play the game. Uh, they showed their support in her so that people know that this is like something that athletes do deal with and it is a valid reason to uh, take care of yourself. And uh, for so to people who that's just not readily apparent to them or they want to resist their understanding of that they ask the question does Simone Biles teach people that it's good to take care of yourself or is she teaching our youth and I just can't deal when think of the children is a key part of the argument I literally can't deal because you don't you don't care about the children but that's a different discussion they're asking is she teaching people that it's okay to not finish what you start and um, I say both and I say both is good um, for the for the tight heads that want to see quitting what you start as a bad thing these are also probably the same kind of people that like hustle culture. They like the idea of working hard um, and being creative and coming up with a new business idea that can make you rich and famous. And mind you, those people, those people who do work hard and have a good idea at the right time and become wealthy, those people will advise you to quit what you started if it's apparent that it's not going to work. Quitting what you started when it's very clear that there are more cons than pros is a good thing, it's a necessary thing. In fact, you, I would say, 
you are unwise. It is unwise to continue doing something that you know isn't working. I don't know. I actually don't know what else to say about that. So what she's teaching people is to take care of their mental health and take care of themselves and that there is a mind-body connection that if your mind is not in the right place, you will underperform. And that's a good lesson. And she is also teaching people or the youth to quit what you started when continuing what you started could lead to a horrible, horrible failure. <laughs> a a life-altering failure. I don't know which millionaire says this, but I think it's Richard Branson or Gary Vee. I don't know. One of them who say, like, rich people are really good at quitting. They're constantly quitting. <laughs> and they go on to explain further that they're quitting things that they see is it's not it's not going to work I think this is a good thing now now that we've answered that question let's talk about why did she elicit such a such a response because the the guy that stands out in my mind is the guy who I don't know who he is I don't even remember his name um, I just remember he said that she's an American she's selfish just calling her every every word under the book that's just not that's not a cuss word right and i think most people are like what are you talking about uh we're really confused why would you call her un-american why would you call her selfish why why would you rather she never showed up at the games like why why is that okay to you uh why why are you undermining the the talents of the other women on the team um, you know, why, why are you implying that Simone Biles is the only person who's good enough to win the United States a gold medal when there's four other women on the team who are also supposed to be good enough to win the U.S. a gold medal? Um, why, did, why do you not put into consideration that she is underperforming so badly that she could cost the United States a medal at all? Like, we're wondering, I don't think I've ever seen that before. It was a Blue Lives Matter flag, but it also had Black Lives Matter written on it. Uh, I kind of, that's, I kind of wish that would go viral. That's like, that would throw uh, some conservatives for a loop, right? Anyway. And, um, there's two things to it that, that, that come to my mind that kind of explain this. One has to do with gender. One has to do with generations. Let me talk about the gender aspect of the negative response to Simone Biles. I think it's a gendered response. I think the negative response to her is, is gendered. Uh, I see that it's mostly men mostly adult men who have a negative response to Simone Biles stepping down. And, um, and my explanation for this is that these men also seem to be men who really ascribe to uh, the American identification of a man, which is this that nothing should overcome your will to keep going. Nothing should overcome your drive. Mental health may or may not exist. Your drive to overcome should be stronger than, than your literal mind, than your literal mental health. Um, your drive to overcome and conquer should override your physical capabilities. Your drive to overcome and conquer should override 
systemic and systematic uh, barriers. And why do they feel this way? Because they feel that this is the definition of being a man. What it means to be a man is to achieve. That's what it means to be a man. They are insulted when anybody tries to tell them that there are reasons that they may not be able to achieve. Heaven forbid you tell one of these kind of men that they very well, most likely, almost certainly will never become billionaires. It is, I love that, this place, okay. It is almost certain that they will never become a billionaire. They probably know this, but heaven forbid you say that to them. Any implication that their drive is not good enough to overcome any type of barrier or obstacle demeans their manhood. Furthermore, when they put themselves in the situation of Simone Biles, they can't imagine a reality where they could publicly, with a straight face, tell the world that they're giving up because that also demeans their manhood. AKA, they would rather keep going and fail. They would rather keep going and cost the US even a bronze medal. They would rather keep going and break their neck and be hospitalized and never be able to play again. They would rather keep going and die. Listen, these men idolize people who die for their sport. Um, I used to have a, I used to be really into Patrick but David, met him on occasion as well, broke bread, had lunch, dinners, and one of his you know, favorite people, favorite idols that he thinks about a lot is this um, race car driver, race car driver, race car driver named Senna. He really admires him. There are a lot of great qualities about Senna. If you never heard about Senna, the, the Brazilian race car driver, uh, there's movies about him. There, he's he's a wonderful human being, and one of the things that made him most admirable is be is that he became a martyr for his country he died in his sport and he is a situation very much you know he kind of knew something was wrong he knew something was off he could have had the chance he he may have had the chance to say hey something's wrong i need to tap out because I think something's faulty with my car. I just feel it. But he chose not. He chose to continue and he died for that. And he becomes a martyr. And there's so I don't want to take away from what Sana means to people because he means there's so many things that he can that he can mean to somebody as a non-Brazilian and even more if you are Brazilian. But I do think and I do think men relate to this aspect of dying for your manhood, for your manliness is worth it. Um, thinking back to when in the United States dueling was legal and then even when dueling was illegal, uh, the juries, what, what's it called? Jury nullification. The, the juries would nullify it. Right, if you were arrested and convicted of uh, dueling, and you would be trialed in front of your peers, your peers would say, "Yes, this person did duel. It is illegal, but we believe that this law is stupid. People should be dueling." And if you don't know what dueling is, it's when somebody—it's between men. Somebody offends you. And instead of just bickering back and forth like we currently do on Twitter, you challenge each other to a duel. Now, most duels, you show up, you have your gun, three, two, one, bam. But usually you just point your pistol, you don't shoot or you point your pistol to the sky. And the dispute is settled. You have proven your manliness. 
the fact that you showed up, the fact that you showed that you were willing to die for what you believe in, you've proven your manhood, that's good enough. Now, there are people who became injured, they did die, they did shoot, and, you know, if you did shoot, you're considered a distrustworthy guy, you're not honorable, but you're alive, and also some people think you're kind of a, it's kind of like nowadays, you can be someone that's a jerk, but there's always going to be people that admire you for being a jerk. So, anyway, all of this to say that this is part of manhood and manliness. And they're offended when people don't, don't want to participate in that. <laughs> and this brings me to the generational piece. Because if you are millennial or below, you're a zillennial, Gen Z, alpha, you have been blessed to grow up in an information age. Um, if you're a millennial, you grew up with the internet, meaning you were able to f hear something and do some form of research. Google it from the comfort of your home. You did not have to go to the library like the previous generation did. Physically go to the library, look for the books, search through the index, and this and the table of contents and and read and sort through things and make photocopies that's what our previous generations had to do and uh surprise surprise nobody really did it <laughs> if you did then you would be considered a journalist and 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 that's what people did if people were into doing that they just became a journalist right or they wrote books um but now from the comfort of your home we could get on our dial-up computers and go on AOL.com and do a search and kind of see things that we never seen before and go in chat rooms and hear things that we never heard before and then play video games and uh, the video games can now be online and you talk to people from all over the country and then uh, Gen Z have uh, grew up with social media where you can go viral in Syria and a young child will see the horrors of what international relations can do in a way that the previous generation may have literally never seen or thought of unless they were the ones who got drafted to go to war. Um, like, I'm just saying that this generation has access to information and is literally being uh, thrown at you at the speed of light. Uh, you can't ignore the information. And it's kind of this thing where once you know too much, you can't unknow it. And you think about it and you come to realizations. And the realization that the younger generation is having is that they're realizing that the way that we live is not simply just the way it is. Whereas before, especially when I was growing up, I would ask my teachers, why this? Why is that? Why is this? Why is that? And the teachers would just say, that's just the way it is. And you just had to accept it. But now it's like, actually, no. Um, it's this way because it enter critical race theory. Actually, no. It's this way because uh, insert knowing actual history. No, actually, it's this way because insert a basic knowledge of how economies work and why there's different economies and why certain countries have different economies that they have. Now, it's no longer that's just the way it is. Now, there's actually a rationale, a reasoning, uh, a way to intellectualize why things are the way they are. And then once you have that intellect, once you have that intellect, that knowing you're able to start applying it to your everyday life you're able to start to see hmm i don't like the way this aspect of my life is going i think it has something to do with a certain system how do i reduce my participation in that because i don't like that or you know what i understand this system that i'm in I don't like the effect that it's having on me. How do I minimize the, the negative effect the system is having on me? And you start to apply it to your life. And I think uh, older generations resent this because this is something they could not do. And 
that if they did attempt to do it, they were labeled hippies, they were outcasted. Heck, McCarthy, McCarthyism made it so that you could never work again and you would be hungry and homeless. They were unable to opt out or if they did know enough to be able to opt out, it was dangerous. It could cost your livelihood. And I think they resent the young generation's ability to, at an early age, identify what's going on and at an early age decide how much they want to participate in it if they want to participate at all. I think these these people who are either one too attached to this arbitrary definition of manhood or b too attached to um too attached to how they were forced to live i think they are envious of a generation that is able to acknowledge reality and decide what they want to do with that information and that acknowledgement. I think they're envious. I was inspired to make this video because ContraPoints released a video today. It feels like a national holiday when she releases a video and she talks about envy versus jealousy. And I feel that is, that is what I'm sensing from these people who I'm using Simone Biles just as, a, as an example. These people are not happy with Simone Biles, but there's also a lot of things that they're not happy with. With no real solution, just sharing that they're unhappy with it. And it really seems like they're unhappy because they're envious. To which I would say, then join us. <laughs> join us in learning about what reality is and choosing how you want to live based on that join us the water is fine actually the more people who join us the more of a free nation we can actually have wouldn't that be fabulous anyway that's what i think so um those are my thoughts in conclusion when it comes to simone biles she did the right thing and as everybody else has said, she doesn't owe anybody anything. And if you really think about it, I mean, I probably would make the same decision. There's no way I'm going to put myself in jeopardy for the glory of the U.S. gymnastics organization that covered and defended a serial child emmer. A serial child heir. I'm not going to put my life on the line for an organization that covered and defended for somebody who forever affected my mental health and the mental health of my friends and my peers. It, it does feel gross. It does feel gross that this organization would have any expectations from me other than paying me some kind of uh, reparations for, <laughs> for suffering. You know, so I, you know, even if you, let's, let's not even bring that into the equation. Let's not bring the horrors and transgressions of that organization into the discussion. Just pure and simple, it is totally fine to set boundaries, especially when there's a lot at stake. And it's a lose-lose situation. And when you're in a lose-lose situation, go ahead and set your boundaries because you only live once, you live for yourself. And when you are an icon like Simone Biles, we would rather have you alive and able to win another day and coach and coach another day than, uh, than not. Simone Biles doesn't owe anybody anything. But furthermore, it's it's interesting to understand the point of view of these people, and uh, I might be looking down on them 
and that might be how I cope with them not making sense to me but it does bring about it does make me feel like a new zeitgeist is here the American can-do attitude the American grit over everything attitude this attitude of if you can't afford to put food on the table just work yourself to death and that's good um it is oh, just work a hundred hours a week in a dangerous oil field and that's good like this attitude that i grew up with and i used to think it was good i you i used to be somebody who worked my ass off for nothing i used to be that person if you look at my old youtube videos you'll you can see i was that kind of person and then I and then I realized I learned about reality, um, and I think the, the America, the culture of America is changing to um, also take care of yourself because uh, sometimes cancer is not curable, <laughs> and this type of mindset can lead to some bad illnesses. And, and then and then when you're sick, you can't work at all. Like, it, Mrs. Huffington, I really commend her because when she first came out with her whole, hey, everybody, sleep is good. Tell, stop telling your employees not to sleep. Tell them to go get some rest. Hey, everybody, taking a break and going for a walk is actually good for you and good for your company. Okay, this is Ariana Huffington. She is she has been trying to convince business people that it is a good idea for your employees to take care of their health. And not only are your employees happy and healthy, your profits will also increase. I'm like poor Miss Huffington. You, you, she has to throw in your profits will increase just to get these people to listen. When actually we're alive, we're humans, and your health should be a good enough reason. And you know, go figure. When you're healthy, you perform better. Who would have thunk it? And, and I think America is starting to to move towards that and when ariana huffington first came out with you know these little phrases sleep is good for you and your business these little phrase these little things that she would come out with it was like so radical it was so stupidly radical this was just like 10 years ago or something it see people were acting like she just she just found a cure <laughs> for uh, metastases, you know? And I think now it's becoming the norm, which makes me really excited. It makes me really happy. And it makes me um, interested in, in, in what's going on in our nation. So thanks for watching. I am now driving in circles because I don't know where this African shop is. So until next time, much love, much luck. I hope you left a comment and gave me a like if you're watching to the end. How do I how do I exit this? Much love, much luck. Peace out.